Did you know that every single time you travel on a plane, you're going forward in time? That's right. You're going fast enough that you're affected by the laws of relativity and you are going forward in time. Granted, it's a mere fraction of a second, only a few nanoseconds, but it remains a fact. Air travel is such a strange thing, completely distorting our perception of time and space. Our brains, I feel, have never really evolved fully enough to deal with it quite yet. And that's something that happens to the protagonist in tonight's tale of mystery and intrigue. Well, my dear friends, it's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink. And listen. I had been gone for years. My hometown, Singularity, located in an isolated part of Montana, was never enough for me. A place so strange and unusual, but with almost nothing to do. The day I turned 18, I packed my bags and set off to see the world. After five long years, I decided to go home to reunite with my family and friends. I was in Boston, Massachusetts when I decided to go home. I took a taxi from my hotel to Logan Airport. My flight was for nine in the evening but I wanted to get there extra early to get things set and grab a few mementos for my history buff of a friend, Marcus. As I made my way through the airport, I saw a sign that had all the flights listed on it. I searched for mine. The closest town to Singularity was Great Falls, so that's where I'd be flying to. In the middle of one of the columns of listed flights, I spotted it. Boston to Great Falls, 9pm. Estimated arrival time, 25.25. <laughs> Isn't there only 24 hours in a day? I laughed to myself. What a strange glitch. The fact that nobody else had noticed the mistake was also a bit weird. But I guess with so many people moving about, nobody really had the time to stop and notice. I continued onto my gate to wait until boarding began. When it was time to board, I noticed a man in all black and sunglasses staring at me as I stood up. I don't know why, but I felt a shiver run down my spine. He didn't appear threatening, or like he was even going to reproach me. Nonetheless, his gaze on me felt unusual. I ignored this feeling and boarded the plane. I found my seat without much trouble. I'd reserved a spot near the window, and the other passengers who'd be sitting next to me had not yet boarded. Without complication, I managed to store my carry-on luggage and take my place. I slid up the little window cover and looked out over the airport. So many planes going to so many different places. When I'd first started my journey five years ago, I'd wished to take every flight to see as many new places as I could see. Now, I was excited to finally see home again. A thought I never believed I'd have. Some time passed before everyone had boarded and taken their seats. But soon enough, the plane began to move. I stared out the window as the plane accelerated and began lifting off into the sky. This had always been my favourite part. To see the world move past you so fast, and then see everything moving much slower the higher you get. The flight from Boston to Great Falls has a little over six and a half hours. I thought about using the time to get some sleep, but ultimately decided on ordering a drink from one of the flight attendants once we'd reached cruising altitude. As I sat, sipping my drink, I realised that the two seats next to me were still empty, I'd been so preoccupied with taking in the views my seat had to offer that I hadn't even realised the seats remained vacant. I took a look around the cabin. Every seat on the flight was taken, except for the ones next to me. Now, generally flights will fill to capacity quite quickly, so I thought it unusual for there to be two seats in a row not filled. <laughs> More space for me, I supposed. I turned my gaze back out the window and continued sipping my drink. About 15 minutes before midnight, 
I heard someone sit down in the seat next to me. I turned to see that it was the man that had been staring me back at the airport. Hello, he said, offering me an awkward smile. Hi, I replied awkwardly. I don't mean to be rude, but why are you sitting next to me? The view is breathtaking, don't you think? I agree it is, but why... Makes the time pass quicker, he interrupted, letting out a quick laugh. He continued. Makes the time fly by so fast. One might think they've been staring out the window longer than there are hours in the day. I looked at him, confused by his comment. He blankly stared out the window, and then turned his eyes back to me. Do you believe that? Believe what? That there could be more hours in a day. <laughs> no, I don't. And if I'm being honest, you're beginning to sound like a crazy person. What is crazy but to look at the world in more unusual ways? To believe the impossible to be possible? Most people think it's a disease. Some kind of thing you can cure. Sometimes, sure. Nothing else but chemicals in the brain running amok. But true crazy? Now, that's living. Sir, you're beginning to scare me. Uh, please, go back to your seat or I'll ask the air marshal to remove you. In the blink of an eye, he pulled out a pocket watch from his pocket and dangled it in front of my face by the chain. I looked at him, baffled by his behavior. I began to stand and call for the marshal when he grabbed me by the wrist. I looked at him, fear beginning to come over me. I didn't mean to frighten you, but merely open your mind to something new. Cautiously, I sat back down. He drew my attention back to the pocket watch. It swung back and forth perfectly, as if we were sitting on solid ground. Look closely at the watch. See how it moves? See how it ticks? Something about it is different than any other watch. What do you mean here? Just look at the watch. What else seems out of place about it? I stared at the watch, carefully examining it, and then I saw it. Oh, the watch is in military time. Yes, but what else? What other thing stands out about this particular watch? Again, I looked closely at the watch. As I stared, something stuck out at me. Oh, it has 27 hour markings. Yes. Now, why would a watch count 27 hours instead of 24? <laughs> because it was made wrong? Uh, some kind of reference to something? No. You see, the reason this watch is particularly different is because it grants its owner an extra three hours of the day. Imagine what you could do with such extra time. I stared blankly at the man for a moment. <laughs> Did he think I was such an idiot that I believe his ramblings about some stupid pocket watch? Of course there can't be more than 24 hours in a day. My will to try and remain civil with this man was quickly wearing away now. Sir, I... Chris, he again interrupted. What? That's my name. Chris. Okay, Chris. I'm sorry, but your rambling about this stupid pocket watch is beginning to get on my nerves. Now, unless you have some kind of proof that... Chris's hand quickly grabbed mine, startling me. He placed the watch in my hand, staring at me intensely as he did so. I gift to you the pocket watch of Raven Valley, where time is strange and the impossible is possible. I looked down at the pocket watch. It was a few seconds to midnight. I watched as it ticked away. Three, two, one. Midnight. Nothing. I looked up to say something to Chris, but he was gone. I poked my head up to see where he had gone. 
I felt fear rush over my entire body. Looking around the cabin of the plane, only to see every passenger in the plane motionless, staring at the seat in front of them. As I got up to investigate things further, I also noticed that there were no sounds. The noise of the plane engine had gone quiet, but yet the plane flew on. I also noticed that there was no turbulence whatsoever. Feeling a combination of shock and fear, the only thing I could now bring myself to do was return to my seat. The next time I looked at the watch, it read 25.03. A loud ding echoed throughout the cabin, and the pilot began to speak. He announced that we would be beginning our descent in a moment, and we were to buckle our seatbelts. I watched as the entire cabin, in unison, buckled themselves in. What the f*** is going on? The words came out of my mouth as strangely as the scene around me. Soon after, we began our descent. After landing, and the jet bridge being connected to the plane, row by row, passengers stood up grabbed their luggage and exited the plane. I waited until everyone had gotten off before I stood to grab my things. As I exited the plane, the flight attendants glared at me as I walked past them. I didn't stop to use the bathroom, which I very much needed to do, but simply made my way through the airport as fast as I could. Outside, there was a row of taxis. I walked up to one and asked the driver if they were available. He creepily replied in a monotone voice, I am available. I paused a moment before getting into the cab. I told the cabbie my destination and the cab started off. I pulled out the watch to look at it again. It read 26.05. The drive to Singularity was only an hour or so away from the airport. What would happen when the clock went back to one? As we got close to the edge of Singularity, I took a look at the clock. Thirty seconds until it would reach one. I watched as the second hand ticked away. At twenty seconds to go, I started hearing a low humming noise. At ten seconds to one, what sounded like music off in the distance began to play. Five seconds to go, and I felt a wave of pain rush through my head. Three two, one. The radio began blasting music, the small bumping of the car as it raced through the street, and the cabbie began talking to me, but as if we'd been in the middle of a conversation the whole ride. I shouted for him to turn it down as he was in mid-sentence. He looked at me in the rearview mirror and nodded his head. As he turned it down, I realized that my heart was nearly beating out of my chest. It took a minute to get my breathing under control, slowly inhaling and exhaling. How long till we arrive? I asked the cabbie, still feeling my heart beating quicker than usual. About ten minutes or so, sir. And the time? Do you mean what time we'll be arriving at? No, what time is it right now? One oh two in the morning, sir. Now, you might have noticed that I'm going more and more to the exclusive stories those shared with me directly on my subreddit and via email. And this is something through necessity, I feel, that I'm going to be doing from now on, so... I will be on the lookout for more and more stories from you. If you got a story for me, well, you can share it, and there's a good chance that I will read it. That one was fantastic, wasn't it? Beautiful, beautiful story. And plenty more to come, just like that. You know I'll be back with you next week, don't you? Go on now. Get out there and enjoy yourself. It's the weekend. I'll be back with you on Monday. But for now, sweet dreams and bye-bye.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay?